Hey guys, today we have something truly exciting on the bench, the upcoming powerhouse from Intel. It is the Core i9-14900K. This is a beast of a chip which might just give your cooler or your power supply a run for its money. It's backing 24 cores and 32 threads and can turbo boost almost to 6 GHz on its performance cores. While it's a refresh from 13th gen and may not bring any crazy new features to the table, it does offer a proven and reliable performance ready to tackle whatever you throw at it. Poised to dethrone the i9-13900K as Intel's flagship, today we're putting this beast through its paces. We'll explore its performance, delve into its firmals and see how it measures up to the competition. We'll spotlight on gaming but a nod to some productivity tasks as well. In our tests here we'll be using the new Asus Z790 Dark Hero board which is an absolute beauty. We have a dedicated video out on the channel already so feel free to check it out after and on the way there maybe consider subscribing for more content like this. Since 14th gen CPUs are using the same architecture they will actually work on the older Z690 boards with BIOS update so that's a sweet bonus but make sure to peek at the support pages for individual boards just to confirm. For the rest of the testing we use the same components, we've opted for the fastest RAM available for the platform which means AMD RAM maxed out at 6000 mega transfers while Intel achieved 7.2000 mega transfers. Let's dive right into the benchmark, starting with some games. We had to redo our tests to make sure that we have the most up to date drivers, so while the results are somewhat narrowed down, this should sketch a clear picture of how it fares against AMD's top performing chip. Let's start with a good old shout out of a Tomb Raider, where the 14900K snags a 19% lead over the 7700X in average FPS and 24% uptick in 1% lows. The 7800X3 chip clocked in about 19% higher average FPS and parallel 1 percentiles. Shifting gears to FPS per watt, this is where the new Intel chip really struggles. It is 38% less power efficient than AMD's lower end chip and 3 times less power efficient than the X3D variant. The next game is a new one for us, Starfield. Here the performance across all CPUs is pretty much neck and neck and that's because even at 1080p we hit GPU bottleneck. In a way that's silver lining as your main objective should be just getting the best possible GPU for this game and any decent CPU should suffice. You can also see this in GPU busy chart. Without getting too deep into the explanation for GPU Busy, it is a term coined by Intel for feature of their graphics card that measures how hard GPU is working when rendering images, especially during gaming. Think of it like a work meter of your GPU, showing how long it takes to draw each frame on your screen. By checking the GPU Busy metric, you can see the balance between the work done by your computer's brain, the CPU, and the GPU helping to spot any hitches that might be slowing down your game. It is a neat tool for understanding and improving your gaming performance by identifying if and when your GPU is being overworked. As you can see here, the GPU is working the whole time, with a graph showing GPU busy and frame times closely together which implies balance. In the previous game Shadow of a Tomb Raider, the gap is far wider and that's why we still had some scaling between different CPUs. Let's move on to the next game, Horizon Zero Dawn, and here we yet again see Intel's performing better than 7700X, which is really expected. It is after all a much more powerful chip, but it loses out to the 7800X 3D chip from AMD by 8.5% on average FPS and 2.5% on 1% lows. The difference in power efficiency again is almost triple, which is just insane. To keep things brisk, Let's jump onto our final game, World War Z, which is really easy to run. And if you look at GPU Busy, it is again very close to the full GPU utilization. This graph showcases the dynamics with the AMD 7800X3D. Shifting gears to the performance, we see about 7-8% improvement between CPUs on average FPS and about 15-17% on 1% lows. And the power efficiency ratios remain consistent with the early observations. Let's now jump into some other benchmarks, kicking things off with synthetic CPU tests in OCCT. The results here show the dominance of having more cores to do more work pays off, and due to the higher frequency, the performance in single core tasks is also leading. But not by much. This is the kind of workload where X3D chips are at their weakest as they have much lower frequency limits and quickly fall behind. The other area where Intel has always been very strong is high speed memory support. In this test it shows a clear advantage of using 7200 mega transfer kits when compared to the 6000 on the AMD systems and this is not even the fastest RAM. Asus boasts this board can support up to 8000 mega transfers and the Apex board can go beyond 8400 which is significantly higher speed and is just not possible on the AMD platform. The next test is DaVinci Resolve 
And here having more cores and fast single core performance is a strong advantage for Intel, with 15-20% to lead over AMD chips in most cores. But all of this comes at a pretty significant cost. Intel has pushed these refresh chips to the limit, and at the top end, we're actually unable to cool the CPU with 360ml liquid AIO with fan set to 100%. Have a look at this CPU burn-in test. The Intel chip is just peaking to 100 degrees and thermal throttling. Here we can clearly see the CPU is running at its highest throughout the test, but it is something that content creators are likely to experience when rendering files. In this paragraph, you can see how it's jumping between high 200 and mid 300 watts. That is three to four times higher than the 7800X3D chip and uses double the 7700X. So bear this in mind, performance on this chip comes at a trade of thermals and power, which leads us well to the conclusion. The new Intel 4900K is a powerful chip, but I would probably stay away from it if you're interested in just in gaming. AMD's X3D chips provide much better value and in many cases, better performance. But if you have the need for fast CPU with many, many cores, this is certainly one to consider. But bear in mind that you have more costs for the high end power supply, as well as the need for a top of the line cooler as compared to something more reasonable for the weaker chips. Now, I'll leave it over to you. What are your thoughts on this release? Is this CPU on your wish list and what would you actually use it for? Drop your comments down below. Also, since pricing keeps shifting after the video goes live, we'll leave a link down below so you can check out all the parts used in the video. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.